I'm sorry, I'm running a little bit late this morning with my little clock behind me. Uh, good morning. Good to see everybody. Everybody happy we got a little sunshine this morning? I am. It's beautiful outside. We got some up and coming events that's going on. We got the women's birthday lunch coming up on Thursday, April the 7th, 11.30 a.m. Let's all the ladies be up here for the birthday luncheon. Uh, the men's huddles coming up this Thursday will be at 6.30. We'll all meet in the back back here, all the men do, and bring a little bit of food if you want to bring some, but we all bring a lot, so just show up. If you've never been to one of these, it's a great huddle of men's fellowship with one another. Church work day. Church work day is coming up. I'm so happy. Uh, Saturday, April the 16th at 8 a.m., Everybody meet up here, bring your work clothes and all that, and we'll meet up here in the fellowship hall. But we normally, a lot of us, we meet down at the diner, and we have breakfast at 7 if y'all want to meet us down here or just meet us up here at 8 or whatever. But we got church work day coming up on that day, on Saturday, April 16th. You may want to pencil that in. we got business meeting. Next church meeting is scheduled for Sunday, April the 24th at 6 p.m., up here at the church. We got the egg hunt, and we're still gathering up a lot of stuff for the egg hunt, and all that's coming up on our, on our Easter for Easter Sunday. And then we're still taking in donations out there in a the foyer. We got a big, big thing. And thank you all. Thank you all for, for doing that, bringing eggs and getting all that for the kids. Uh, the schedule change, please note that the Wednesday Bible study We've changed our schedule for that. There's just a different time. We're beginning at 6 now. And then we have a choir after Wednesday night uh, scheduled the, for the Bible study. We can do, you can just, just kind of, if you want to come up, really, we, we need help with our choir. If y'all want to come help, it's after the, the Wednesday. Uh Miss Betty Bias wanted to say thank you all for everything that you did on her birthday, on her 27th birthday. Is that right, Miss Betty? On her 27th birthday this year for showing up, eating cake and ice cream. She was so thankful for that. If you have a birthday in the month of April, please stand. <laughs> Glory. If you're a visitor and this is your first time, hundredth time, or how many millions of times you've been here, in your territe portion of your bulletin, there's a little thing with, we would really like to get to know you. If you would like to put in there a prayer, or if you're just visiting and we can contact you in some way to pray for you and whatever your unspoken is or something going on in your life or whatever, or just visiting. 
please fill that out and put it in the put it in the plate as the plate comes around. I think that's got it all. Yeah. She still, if you guys want to help her with flowers or anything, please contact her. Good morning and welcome. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. One of the things that we would like to do next week at the beginning of the service is have a Palm Sunday processional where we reenact Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem the uh, Sunday before he was crucified. So we have several folks that are participating in that, but we still need more if we're going to have a crowd. So if you would like to do that, and pretty much you're just going to be walking and waving palm branches and uh, laying down cloaks in front of Jesus and shouting Hosanna and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you would like to help us with that, we would ask you to meet in the fellowship hall immediately after the service so we can get you a costume assigned. So um, looking for lots of volunteers with that. Let's stand and we're going to worship the Lord together.
looks like this is going to be one of those mornings when uh, we have lots of technical I'm difficulties. <laughs> We're going to sing that song, um, share that special with you another day. Yeah, so let's go fun. on and continue with our worship with Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And I'd ask you to stand with me again.
We're going to do something a little bit different. Um, since we're down a few folks in the choir this morning, I'm going to ask you guys to be our choir and sing our choir special with us. So we're going to do Because He Lives, and it's page 260 in your big red hymnal. Page 260, we're going to sing all three verses. And what we're going to do different is that the ladies only are going to sing the second verse. So second verse, just ladies, all right? Because he lives. Thank you. 
We've come to our fellowship time, so I'd ask everyone to stand. We're going to sing one verse of Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, and then we're going to take a few moments to greet one another. Thank you. 
children to meet in the lobby and go to children's church. Um, we've got our CD now. If y'all don't mind, we're going to sing our special now, right before the sermon. Lay 
Thank you, Ashley and Debbie. Y'all did a wonderful job on that, and our choir and all that. Let's give them a hand. Thank y'all so much. All right, now it comes to the time of breaking the bread, and we're going to get on with the good stuff. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day, Lord. Uh, Father, hide Brother Milan behind the cross as he brings your word, Lord. And if there's someone that came through the door today, Father, let these words be fresh. Let them be new in their heart. Let them be able to give them the answer that they were looking for when they got here. Father, these altars are always open, Father. If there's anything, anything on your heart, remember, his yoke is light. Carry your yoke to the altar. Forgive us where we failed you. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Before I, I come out uh, to pre uh, break God's word and be able to lay it out and for us to understand it. And I pray that God will be seen and not me. I look, make sure my hair's not sticking up. Make sure my pants are zipped up. You laugh, but I have to make sure. I have uh, had uh, uh, situations where that just sort of kills the spirit. In the room. We don't want anything to kill the spirit this morning. We want the spirit to move in our hearts and our lives. We want to hear God this morning. Satan wants to distract us. He wants us to uh, listen to lies. But we need to be sure about something today. We need to be sure. In fact, he says here in Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read verse 18 real quickly. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That our eyes be opened and enlightened to be able to see what God has this morning. Do we realize it? Do we come to the assurance that God is in our midst today? God is here with us today. Now, that means several different things today, but God is still God. God is with us. He knows our intent this morning. He knows our conditions. You know, we can be going through a religious motion this morning, and God not pleased with it. In fact, he talked about Balaam. You remember Balaam? He, he was a very godly man, but he kind of got religious for a little while. In fact, in the New Testament, it said it this way, Balaam, who lost, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He kind of got away from God, or really worshiping God and serving God, and kind of got to enjoying the fleshly things in the world. We know the story of Balaam, how he got on uh, his little donkey, and he started into... Uh, all of a sudden, on this journey he was traveling, 
We forgot about God. We can forget about God sometimes. That old donkey, he saw that the angel of God was standing in the way to take his life. Now, I, I've never seen an angel holding a soldier, but a, 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 a sword, not a soldier, holding a sword. I believe that'd get my attention. But Balaam was so caught up in his own fleshly lust and his thing, he couldn't even see the angel standing there with a the sword. Here, this little donkey riding him in there, he sees it, and he. He does what anybody with a little common sense would do. He kind of stirred out of the way. He didn't want to get hit with that sword. Oh, Balaam, he was just so upset at that old donkey. Say, get back on the path here. Let's uh, we got places to go. I've got money to make. Goes a little bit further, and old donkey sees the angel with a sword once again. And he Beers out of the way, but this time there's a wall on each side, and he crushed old Balaam's leg up against the wall. Old Balaam, he's angry. I don't know if you've ever ridden on an old donkey or a horse. They like to rake you off on trees and everything else. And he's beating on that old donkey to get what you what you doing. Went a little bit further, and, and finally the angel of the Lord with a with sword standing in such a way that it was so narrow that the donkey couldn't pass by, so he just slapped that thunder. He's a beating on that donkey. And then finally God opened his eyes. God finally opened his eyes. And he could, could see the danger that's in his path. Maybe God needs to open our eyes today. To see the danger that's really in our path. Is there danger in our path? We need to make sure that there's not danger in our path. I'll tell you, I occasionally have to go up under the house to check on a leak or to do something in the house. And I don't, not, I'm sure not all of y'all do that, but some of you guys know what I'm talking about. When I open that old door and I'm starting under that dark house, you know what I do first? I take a flashlight and I go, I want to see what's under there before I get under there. There ain't not enough room under there for me and a snake, too. If he's going to be under there, I'll just let him stay under there. I'm not going under there. I'm sending my son-in-law under there. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> but I want to be sure that there ain't not something else under there before I get under there. We need to be sure about certain things in life. We need to have our eyes open and our understanding made clear. He says in Revelation 3.17, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased in goods and have needs of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. He said in Revelation, people, we think we're in a lot better shape than what we really are. God needs to open our eyes to understanding so we can see these things. He said, enlighten that we may have that hope of his calling. I want to talk about the calling that God has here today. Just a little bit about our calling and the will. Who is this book written to? Well, this letter that we have in verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So who is it to? It said it first to the, to the saints that are in Ephesus. Now, what is a, a saint? A person who is recognized as having an accepted degree of holiness, an exceptional degree of holiness, and likeness, and the closeness to God. Would we consider ourselves this morning a saint? Would people look at us and consider us as a saint today, that we have holiness and we have the likeness of God. We call ourselves church folks. I know all kinds of church folks. All kinds. I can't say all kinds have been the likeness of God. He said, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, to the faithful. I should ask myself today, am I sure 
that I may, one of God's faithful, what he called me faithful. Are you faithful today? A lot of people in certain beliefs get really caught up in this word chosen, the elect, the predestination. And I want to talk about that just a little bit today. I want you to know God called me. He set me aside. I believe Jesus went to that cross for me. I believe that. And he called me to do something special, to be one of his servants. Let, let, let's look at that for just a minute. He goes on to say, Grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father, from uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he, as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It's God's will that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. God had a plan. God's got a blueprint of how this is supposed to work, how it's supposed to work in your life and my life. You ever heard that word elect? It's mentioned in God's word many times. When I think about elect, I think about, uh, if you turn on the television right now, we've got everybody wanting you to elect them, don't you? Elect them to an office. That's the problem. People want to be elected to an office. They don't want to do a service a lot of times. We've got a lot of elected officials today that forgot what they've been elected to do. Is that not right? They forget what they're elected to do. They want to be elected just to have an office. Well, I'm not here to get into politics today. I'm going to hear to say, let's look in the mirror a little bit. We want to be elected to go to heaven. Well, God didn't just elect us to go to heaven. He elected us to do a job, to have a service, have responsibility. Are we faithful to that responsibility that we have been elected to do? God chose us. He uses that word, chose us. What does choosing mean? Now, I want you to understand, I've made a lot of bad choices in life. I made some good choices in life. I can look at my wife and my family, and I think I made some good choices. And I opened God's word, and I said, I made a much better choice even with him. A great choice. But I can look back, and I, 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 can, I can look at my body and look at some scars that I may have, and I'm thinking that was some pretty bad choices I made. I mean, some of you kids, y'all may have done that. Y'all may not be that old yet, but you know, when, when you start wanting to impress them girls a little bit, you kind of start riding your bicycle by their house just to see if they look you, you know, and you ride back and forth. You know. Just in case they hadn't noticed, then you'll kind of do it with no hands, you know, behind your head. You know. <laughs> then you kind of get a few scars on your chin making them bad decisions. We do a lot of things that's not really smart. Let me tell you, God makes good choices. When God chose the saints, he was looking for the best of the best. You think about heaven. You think heaven is going to have substandard people there? Heaven's going to have the best of the best. I believe that. We're not going to have, have people when I, I'm walking down those golden uh, streets and I'm not looking and oh, no, that's her again. I'm not going to say it like that. We're going to be the best of the best. Let's think about it for just a minute. Let's get it back in perspective a little bit. I want you to think about the angels. You think God got some great angels and some so-so angels? Let me read a little bit about angels. In Psalms 91, 11 said, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways, 
They shall bear you up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now, I'm sure some of you start thinking, my angel's not doing too good a job. But I assure you, my angel's not better than your angel. I believe sometimes God tells my angel, said, let him get that knot on his head. He needs it. But angels, I believe there's not a second string that he brings in. I believe they're all are high-quality angels. They've got a responsibility. They've got a job to do. They've got to watch after each and every one of us. I mean, I've known some folks, they're so clumsy, I don't know how they walk out the door without falling. But God got angels taking care of us, watching after us. He says in Exodus, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in your way and to bring you unto the place where I have prepared for you. He said, I've got angels in charge. They've got a job to do. Hebrews, he said, but to which of the angels said he at any time sit there now on my right hand until I make unto thee thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? Angels has got work to do. I mean, I, would you think my angel has time to sit there and watch ESPN? He got work to do. Responsibility. Folks, we have jobs to do. Just as angels are part of God's plan, Jesus goes to the cross, and he did that for you and I. Now, you, I said the best of the best. I look in Ephesians 2, chapter 2, it talks about, about uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Let me tell you, when I say he's looking for the best of the best, it's not my work that makes me the best. Don't let, don't let me lose you. It's not about how good I am. If God had wanted me to be one of the best in his army, in his service, you know what he needs to see? Me being faithful to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is what makes me the best. It's not my trophies that I may have had in, in Little League Baseball. Jesus is what makes me the best. Not my accomplishments, but his accomplishments and my faithfulness to him. We need to ask ourselves how faithful are we to Jesus. Growing up in life, I can't say I had as many girlfriends as Mike over here had, probably. <laughs> but I had, I, I had a few girlfriends. But there's only one that I'm real faithful to, and that's her right here. I just had a little small, little situation with her. But when I fell in love, I became faithful to her and only her. Let me tell you, that's the way it is with Jesus. God is looking for someone that's faithful to Jesus. One thing about it, just like when I became faithful to her, it changed my life. My priorities changed. My plans changed. Now, one thing about being in a relationship with her puts me in with a relationship with someone else. That's Miss Lindsay over here. Without Miss Debbie, I couldn't go see Miss Lindsay like I do now. I probably wouldn't be getting Christmas dinner if I didn't have Debbie first. I'd show up and she'd say, what do you want? But because of Miss Debbie, I, I can come on in. In fact, because of Miss Debbie here, I, I can, I mean, if she has something that I need, she's going to give it to me. 
Not because of who I am, because of my faithfulness to do it. Let's carry it a little bit further. We need to have our eyes open here a little bit. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's say I go out here and I have an affair and I cheat on Diggs with four or five different women. Let's say I hit her and I was abusive and I go over and knock on Miss Lindsay's door. I'd say a double barrel shotgun probably. What are you doing? What kind of relationship are we with Jesus? How faithful are we to Jesus has a whole lot to do with what we get from our Heavenly Father. He's looking for the best of the best. Before Mr. Lindsay died, a long time he said his favorite son-in-law. Made me proud. Then he'd remind me, you're the only son-in-law guy. But we need to be known as God's favorite because of how we treat his son. Are we sure about our faithfulness to Jesus Christ? Would our Heavenly Father consider us one of his saints, one of those that, that accepted his son as Lord and Savior? He makes us part of the family because of our relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. He wants us to be part of his life because we're part of his son's life. Is Jesus a part of your life? That's what he chose. He chose for all the people that were sinning, uh, came in this world, born sinners, but they became part of the family through Jesus Christ. God called us. Except his son. We, we need to see that God's with us. He's everywhere. He's part of our lives. We should be faithful to him. God has a will today. A will. What is a will? A will is someone's personal desires. What is God's personal desires today? In fact, it uses this word will, says it in verse 1 by the will of God. In verse 5, it ended the verse by saying, good pleasures of his will. In verse 9, it says, his will according to his good pleasures. In verse 11, he goes on to say, counsel of his own will. We need to understand God has a will. He has a will for our lives. He had a will for when Jesus died upon the cross, what that blood was supposed to do to cover our sins. His will was for humanity to accept Jesus Christ. You know not everybody does that. But those that do, his will is to make them part of the kingdom of God. Are we sure that we are part of God's will? What does God will for my life to do? To serve? It's not about me. It's about what God's will is for me. You think about a will also. A lot of people, you got kids and you, you sit down and write on a piece of paper a will, what you want done, what your desires are to be done with what you have. That's what Jesus did. He wrote out a will. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was what his will was. But he said, you know, you can't come to the Father with sin in your life. He says, I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to pay for your sin. Whatever it takes. I'm going to pay for your sin. And he did. And for that will to take effect, you know, my, I've got two daughters. And we have a will. Now, I'm just going to leave one at mystery who's going to get my golf club. I ain't telling who that is yet. That's my favorite. That's exactly right. My favorite. But, but anyway, the will, it doesn't take effect until I die. 
you know, Clay may come over here and say, I know I'm your favorite son-in-law, so I'm going to take that truck. I said, I ain't dead yet. Still mine. But when I'm gone, it won't be mine to be given to them. Jesus died so that the will could be affected. So that we can receive the blessing. Not only that, we're going to celebrate the Easter, the resurrection. Not only uh, did he die so that the will would come effect, he rose again to be the attorney to make sure it got handed out like he should. I've been uh, on a few different occasions, people have assigned me as the uh, administrator of people's wills. Boy, that, that can be a tough thing, you know. Kids can start bickering and fighting and, oh, that's not fair. Look, I, I, I'm the administrator. I just say, this is what their will was. I always have this put in the people. They want me to help do your will. This is why I tell them. The last thing in here says, and if you dispute or argue with the administrator, you get nothing. That's put in them. I, I, I'm just doing one just right now. I'm finishing up on it. And I remember when I was reading the will to these five kids. They were adults. But I'm reading the will out to them. I could tell, and after I read that, I could tell, see some of them biting their lip because they didn't think part of it was fair. But they looked at me after I read that, and they were afraid to say anything because they weren't going to get anything. And I asked them, did anybody have anything to say? I can tell them, look at them, they didn't like it. God comes to make sure it's took care of. The old devil's going to say, well, he doesn't deserve it. She doesn't deserve it. But Jesus has come back to say, I'm administrator. That was God's will. He died for it. I may not deserve it. But he deserves it. His will take place. But are we sure today of our faithfulness to Jesus Christ? Because it says here, it, very quickly, this letter was to the faithful in Christ Jesus. How faithful are we today? It goes into talking about the wealth, the inheritance, what we receive. We can talk about the holiness and all the great things that we receive. But folks, you weren't chosen. You weren't elected because of you. You were chosen and elected because of Jesus. Remember this. Because of Jesus, he died for you. How faithful are you to him? But a lot of people are going to be blind. Kind of like Balaam. We don't see it. We think it's about something we've done. Because I've walked out. Because I got baptized. It's not because of any of those things. It's because of what Jesus does, and your faithfulness to accept him. Let me tell you, when I asked Miss Debbie over here, I, I took her down to the church down here at Mount Olive 42 years ago, and I sat down the altar, and I asked her to marry me. That wasn't the end of it. There had to be an answer to it. She had to say yes. She had to say yes. I just said yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus. Not only did she could just say yes. A lot of people say yes to Jesus. But you got to be faithful too. You got to be faithful. When we showed up to get married, she had to show up. Each and every week for us to have that relationship, we got to be faithful to one another. We got to show up. I mean, eight times she probably looked over me and said, I'm tired of that fella. But for this to work, you got to show up. It's not easy. It's not tired. I know a lot of times she's tired. She looks over at me and says, But what do you want for supper? I mean, I could lie to her and tell her I wasn't hungry. She knows better. We've got to be faithful to God. Because I promise you one thing. He's been faithful to us. Are 
are we sure of our faithfulness to him? I don't want you in closing this one thing. Verse 22 says, It has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things in the church, which is his body and fullness of him that fill all in all. He provides it all. We just need to be, don't worry about all the things of this life. Don't worry about the things that get us confused. We need to think about one thing. How faithful are we to him? All the rest of it took care of it. I've got confidence he's going to take care of it. All things are in his hand. But am I sure am I faithful to him? As he is faithful to me. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your word. I know you've written this word for us. And I know you're speaking here today to those that are faithful to you. I pray, Lord, there's a reward for that faithfulness. And I know your will today is for us to be faithful. And I pray, Lord, if there's something that we need to be more committed to, that we need to uh, dedicate ourselves to, I pray, Lord, that we be faithful in that today. We need to just ask you to save us today. You've done your part. We do ours. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen. If you stand together without delay this morning, and you come. Thank you for being here today. Let them know that you are praying.